So far, we've defined this positive operator, and then we've also derived that xi0 is equal to this expression. Now we want to find what xi1 is equal to. And based on our derivations before, you can guess that xi1 is equal to the positive operator, a plus applied to xi0, multiplied by some normalizing constant. So in order to find xi1, we're going to have to evaluate this expression and to find what a should be so that this function here is normalized. So now first let's set our sights on finding what a plus xi0 should be. So this positive operator, you can change it a bit and you can see that it's essentially a derivative. So this p over here, this is equal to h bar divided by i d dx, the definition of the momentum operator. And then you add this negative i over here, so you get negative h bar d dx plus m omega x. So this is your positive operator. So it's essentially applying a derivative to this function and then multiplying x m omega to this function. So let's try doing that. So now we're going to find a plus xi0. So this is equal to, we have all these constants over here, and negative h bar d dx plus m omega x. And this operator will be applied to xi0, which is equal to this expression over here. So negative m omega 2 h bar x squared. So first of all, we can group the constants together so that we can get them out of the way. And now we need to apply d dx to this expression over here. So all we have to do is just to apply the chain rule. So this is e to the power of something, so we just retain this term. And then we differentiate this exponent over here, which becomes negative m omega h bar x. So we just pull the 2 down here and it cancels out with the 2. And we also have m omega x applied to this e term over here. So as you can see, this negative sign becomes positive. This h bar cancels out with each other. So in the end, you have 2 m omega x's. So you have two of these. So I can just get rid of this and combine them together. So in the end, you have 2 m omega x times this e term over here. And you can actually combine this 2 m omega with this uh, component over here. And then we'll get square root of 2 m omega. So 2 m omega divided by h bar. So we've considered these constants times m omega pi h bar 1 fourth times x times e to the power of negative m omega 2 h bar x squared. So this is what a plus xi0 should be equal to. And now we need to find xi1, and we know that there is going to be some normalizing constant attached to this expression. So if we, uh, if we, inter if we take the square of this expression and then we integrate it, we're not sure whether this is going to be equal to 1. So we need to find what this normalizing constant should be. So in order to do that, so we call that our expression for xi1 is equal to some constant times a plus xi0. So in order to make sure this function is normalized, we need to consider this expression over here. So this must be equal to 1. So that means you have your normalizing constant, a square. And then you also have this integral over here. So this is a constant, so I can just pull this out. And then inside the integral, you have a plus xi0 squared dx. And a plus xi0, we, we, we've just found what this is equal to. So we can just apply this result over here. We can substitute it right into this integral. So once we evaluate this integral, we can just multiply, uh, divide it over to the other side because it's equal to 1, and then we'll know what a squared should be. So now we're going to set our sights on evaluating this integral. So we have negative infinity to infinity. So this, there are no imaginary components here. So this uh, absolute value square, we can just take directly take the square directly. And so you see that we have these constants over here. And we have more constants. And then we have this x squared times e to the power of negative m omega h bar x squared. So the 2 goes away because we're squaring this dx. And now you see that the main challenge now is to evaluate this integral over here. So you can, you see that these are just constants, so we can just pull them out. 
and you can see that on the inside we have this expression that's causing a bit of trouble. We need to evaluate this integral over here. So how do we do this? And we uh, so this seems like, seems like a difficult integral to evaluate. You can use by parts to evaluate this, but there's actually another trick I can show you on how you can evaluate this integral. So I'm just going to consider the case x squared times e to the power of negative k x squared. So I'm discussing the general case. So in this case, k is equal to m omega divided by h bar. But I'm going to consider this uh, the case with k up, uh, over here on top. And before we get to this expression over here, we first consider the case without the x squared. So this is the Gaussian integral. This is a pretty famous integral. And using a double integral, you can actually prove that this is equal to square root of pi divided by k. So I'm not going to prove this over here, so uh, just accept this as a fact. And then we can actually use this fact to derive what this integral should be. So I'm going to call this f of k. This is a function of k. So I'm now going to differentiate both sides with respect to k. And because over here you see that this is an integral with respect to x, I can just differentiate this term directly. So differentiate this with respect to x, I can just keep the terms and then apply chain rule, so I get negative x squared dx. So this is differentiating this integral. And since I'm, uh, so since this integral is equal to this expression over here, this is also equal to taking the derivative of this expression. So we have the square root of pi. And so this is essentially k to the power of negative 1 half. So taking the derivative, we have negative 1 half times k to the power of negative 3 over 2. And so you see that uh, I can take away these two negative signs over here. And if I just arrange this like this, so I can just put the x squared over here, negative kx squared dx. This is actually equal to the square root of pi divided by 2, uh, 1 over k to the power of 3 over 2. So this is what this integral is equal to. And you can see that we can actually apply this result to this integral over here. So this is the case where k is equal to m omega divided by h bar. And so that means that this integral over here is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2, 1 over this constant to the power of 3 over 2. So let's apply this result immediately. So you see that this integral over here, so let's open a new page, this integral over here is equal to, so let me just copy this out first, This is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2. And then we have 1 over k to the power of 3 over 2. So k is equal to m over divided by h bar. So 1 over k to the power of 3 over 2, that's just equal to h bar divided by m omega 3 over 2. So we can just dump this over here, h bar divided by m omega 3 over 2. So that's what this integral is equal to. And don't forget our original problem. We were trying to evaluate this integral because we were trying to evaluate this larger integral over here. And this larger integral is just these constants multiplied by this integral. And let's see what that gives us. So we're going to apply these constants back to this integral. So in the end, you see, and uh, don't forget that this entire expression here is actually uh, us trying to evaluate this expression. So you see that. So let's just bring the original problem back to focus. So this integral over here is equal to. 2m omega divided by h bar. Now this is me just copying these constants out. Multiplied by this expression. So just a reminder, this is just taking this, these constants and multiplying it by the value of this integral, which we found to be equal to this expression here. So we're just applying it here. And now you can see that uh, h bar divided by m omega to the power of 3 over 2, we can actually just break this up into a square root multiplied by h bar divided by m omega. So these two multiplied together is just equal to the power of 3 over 2. And now you can see that you can cancel out some terms here. Square root of pi, you can get rid of that. This 2, you can get rid of that. These m, uh, square root of m omegas, you can get rid of that. These h bars, you can get rid of that. And these, you can get rid of also. So the end, in the end, you're actually left with nothing. You're just left with 1. And so this actually gives us a really nice result. So this entire integral over here is actually just equal to 1. And then we just told you that this entire integral times this normalizing constant square must be equal to 1 because this must be normalized. And so we have a squared times 1 is equal to 1.
So a squared, of course, is equal to 1. So we can set our normalizing constant to be equal to 1. So in a way, we've kind of wasted our efforts. But here we found out that our normalizing constant uh, is just equal to 1. And if we apply this back to our original problem, we found that a plus xi0 is equal to this expression. And we know that xi1 is equal to the normalizing constant times a plus xi0. And since a was just equal to 1, so the expression for xi1 is simply the expression that we found above here. So I'm just going to copy this out one more time for completeness sake. And so there you have it. This is, this is what we're looking for. And uh, essentially, you can use the same method to find all the other stationary states. 